With less than 10 rounds remaining in the A-League men's season, every round is crucial from here on out. Wins are a must for those teams towards the bottom of the ladder if they want to be playing finals football in 2024. Brisbane Raw, Western United kick us off for a Friday night fixture. This should be a fun game to watch. Brisbane Raw, uh, it's been up and down for them this season, hasn't it? But it's the home form, which has been good. And you just got to look back to a couple of weeks ago when they you know, smashed Melbourne City by a huge scoreline, scoring five past them. You'd expect them to get the win against West United, who are obviously sitting rock bottom at the table. But, you know, the Green and Black, they picked up a, a decent win at home against Newcastle Jets uh, last time around. There were positives in that game. And, you know, they're playing some more young players now. There is a possibility that they do snag a result here away to Brisbane Raw. But I think the Raw should get the job done at home. Could be a close one in the end here. 2-1, uh, I, I expect this match to finish. It could swing either way. I think Western, you know, the sort of, I think they've sort of given up on this season a little bit. I mean, uh, I think they're looking ahead to the future. I mean, you know, they know that they're going to be back, you know, at the, at the home ground in Tarnik for next season. You know, John Aloisi is playing some young players, potentially, you know, building his team for next year, knowing that it's going to be, you know, maybe a, a task too far to to climb to the top six um, at this stage of the season. Uh, Brisbane Raw, though, everything's still to play for for them. Um, having said that, I, I don't want to write Western United out at all. You know, there's still an opportunity uh, that they do make finals. Uh, nothing is impossible in football, but uh, it is extremely unlikely for John Aloisi's team. Brisbane Raw 2 1 in a tight encounter Friday night. Three juicy Saturday fixtures. We'll check it out Sydney FC, Melbourne City, Adelaide United Wanderers, Perth Glory hosting Wellington Phoenix in a distance derby. All three of these games. Potentially could be game of the round. And it starts off with Sydney FC, Melbourne City. Two teams who, uh, in recent history, have been pretty successful. But this season, again, enduring a bit of, a, I guess, some mediocre seasons uh, by uh, their clubs, um, those clubs' high standards, I guess you can say. Um, the Sky Blues, though, steadily build, building some good form. And I, and I spoke about it in the podcast this week. It, 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 it's sort of almost gone under the radar. I mean, they're sitting in a pretty good position and could really charge up, you know, into the top four. Uh, if they keep up this decent form. They're coming up against the Melbourne City side, who uh, uh, it's, it's fascinating. I mean, you look at the team that they're fielding at the moment, and it's really exciting. I mean, that Melbourne derby starting 11 contains Tilio, Naboot, Lecky, McLaren. Uh, you've got, you know, Jimmy Jago, who's a former Socceroo in there as well. Like, it's a strong, it's such a strong team. It's such an exciting team on paper. Um, for whatever reason, it's just not coming together for them at the moment. Still, of course, in the fight for finals, as we know. Um, do they get the result here against Sydney FC? I think just based off the Sky Blues' season form, I think they get away with a win here. Again, I think it'll be a close one. Uh, I don't expect either side to run away with it. Uh, could he could he easily end a draw? But I think Sydney FC, because they have uh, got some decent form building, especially considering they're missing a few plays, you know, some key defensive you know, personnel missing for Sydney FC in recent weeks. And they're still managing to put in good performances. And get the wins, more importantly. Uh, Ufuk Talley doing a good job there at the moment. At Sydney FC, I expect them to get the win there over Melbourne City. Adelaide United, Western Sydney Wanderers. Now, this is really crucial for Adelaide. They're running out of time now when they are slipping down the ladder. And home games, the remaining home games for the Reds, are going to be crucial for them. They really need to win these remaining home games if they want to keep themselves in the fight for finals. Because we know it's going to be super tight and competitive as we come to the final rounds of this season. Western Sydney Wanderers, obviously, you know, they've struggled with, you know, suspensions, injuries. You know, Marcus Anderson, the Swedish striker, is going to be out for eight weeks, which is a massive blow. You'd expect Brianna Borello just to slot into that striker role for the remaining, remainder of the season. Um, th this will be a fun game to watch. I think there's, you know, plenty of talking points and storylines surrounding this game. And, you know, in recent years, this has been a really entertaining watch. You think back to, I think it was last season, right? That 4-4 draw, crazy match. This one could be a similar sort of story. I'm going to go 2-2 draw this time around. Uh, I'm not bold enough to, to call another 4-4, but I can't pick either, either team winning. Um, Adelaide have just been a bit underwhelming at home this season, and Wanderers, it's, it's a, they're in a fascinating position at the moment, and um, they're going to be without Marco Rodan on the sideline at, once again for this game. He's serving another game uh, with his suspension. Um, fascinating game to watch, though. I mean, I'm cute, really curious to see what you guys think of this one. But I, I can't, I can't, I'm not brave enough to pick either of these teams winning. I think a 2-2 draw feels like a realistic outcome uh, when these two teams meet.
Uh, but Perth Glory, Wellington, Phoenix. I'm so excited to watch this game because you've got a Wellington Phoenix side who, as we know, uh, have just been incredible this season. Five points clear on top of the table. But they're coming up against a Perth Glory side who are looking real good at the moment. Alan Stadjic has finally got his tactics and his team clicking. And they are so scary to play at home, especially in the second half at HBF Park. Perth Glory always seem to get the job done, whether it's Adam Taggart, Stefan Kolakowski, David Williams. You know, all these guys are so keen to score in front of the shed end at HBF Park over there in WA. Wellington Phoenix, man. Every time they've faced a difficult task this season, they've managed to overcome it. And that's why I think they will get the job done again here. Um, look, I could, I could, it'd be huge for glory if they won this game. It would be monumental and it would be a massive confidence boost. And I think that would put them, you know, in a great position to make a late charge for the top six, which would be an incredible story. I, I, you just can't tip against Wellington Phoenix. You can't tip against Wellington Phoenix at the moment. There's no chance that they lose this game, I don't think. Um, they're just too good at the moment, defensively, so well organized. And again, I, I mean, we should continue to make the point that Wellington Phoenix have been missing plays basically every week, whether it's, you know, Oscar Zavada who's been out, uh, you know, Alex Rufa has, has been out of the side uh, here and there for some weeks. Um, you know, they, they haven't necessarily had their strongest 11 um, play that much at all this season, uh, but they're still getting the job done. Giancarlo Italiano doing a fantastic job there at Wellington Phoenix. Don't miss that one, man. Though. I mean, it could. It, it, who knows? I mean, Glory could could get it done, and it would be a, an incredible result if they do. Uh, but it should be a fun one to watch, of course. Um, Newcastle Jets, MacArthur at C. So uh, again, Newcastle Jets, another one of these teams who you know we talk about their home games and really need to start picking up points. Again, have been disappointing at home. Newcastle Jets, I guess the MacArthur at C side who are sitting in a really good position on the ladder, you know, top four, and, uh, you know, we'll be eager to bounce back after losing at home to Wellington last uh, time around. Um, you know, have got a strong side, MacArthur, very you know, great depth as well. Plenty of exciting young talent coming through at the Bulls. Um, you know, Bernardo Alibera scoring his first goal for the for, for the Bulls last week as well. And do they get the result here? I think Newcastle Jets just hold on for a draw. Um, you know, Apostolos Stamatolopoulos has been the shining light for Newcastle, despite... Um, you know, not sitting in a great place on the ladder at the moment, uh, still in the bottom four. I don't know if the Jets have enough to overcome MacArthur, um, but I think they do have enough to at least snatch a point here against a, a half-flying Bulls side, who I think um, will be playing finals football this year. Uh, Miller Stachowski, a uh, shout-out to him. He's been doing a great job at the Bulls, his first uh, season in charge, full season in charge of MacArthur FC. The weekend rounds out. With uh, this now, this should be a tight one. Melbourne victory, so of course, Marin is two teams pretty close on the A League men's ladder, and it's it's curious when you look at the the, the, the meetings between these two sides early on in the season. Two two draw for the first encounter um, on the Central Coast. They played a new night round in Sydney, a one one draw. I'm going to call the same uh, the same result this time, a nil nil draw. Let's say um, I just feel like you know victory the main. Take away from them this season is that they're just the best team defensively this year. They've been rock solid at the back. Uh, you know, I keep talking about you know Damian De Silva and Roderick Miranda. That defensive partnership is just unbeatable at the moment. Um, but Central Coast Mariners, you know, defensively have been very good. I mean, Brian Kaltak. Uh, if you know, we can just have a quick word on uh, the centre back from Vanuatu, who is again just having an incredible season. And is so crucial to back there for the Mariners and his partner Dan Hall, who is sort of an unsung hero um, in that Mariners lineup as well. I think Mariners, you know, get away with a point here from Amy Park, which would be a decent considering you know Melbourne Victory have been one of the top sides in the competition this year. Um, of course, as have Mariners. But look, being a Mariners fan, I'm I, I'm not brave enough to call uh, Mariners to pick up a three points here, but um, it's certainly it's, it's certainly achievable for the Mariners. Uh, you know. The attacking threat for the Mariners um, has been the big thing this year. You know, this this year, hopefully, Angel Torres can return to the lineup. Uh, he's you know he he's got a, a handful of goals at Amy Park earlier in the season against Melbourne City. If they can get him back, you know, Ryan Edmondson picked up a hat trick in the AFC Cup uh, recently as well. 
There could be goals in it, but uh, considering that the, the defences um, have been on top for both of these two teams through much of the season, it's got a nil-nil draw, uh, a point each for either side to round out the weekend. What do you guys make of these fixtures? Feel free to drop your predictions down in the comment section and uh, let me know uh, what narratives or uh, what, you know, what storylines you guys were going to be keeping an eye on for this weekend because it's really starting to heat up as we um, see the finish line for this season. We still have a couple months to go, of course. But, um, you know, three points uh, becoming crucial for, for plenty of these teams here as we charge on towards finals time. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. My name is Lucky. This is Coastwood Football, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.